difficult conditions that have hindered an outstanding discovery for decades. A cherished dream that has almost never materialized. A historical memory that manifested itself after several centuries. In 1904, the secretary of the Faculty of History and Philology of the Imperial Novorossiya University, Ernst von Stern, began the excavations of an ancient Greek settlement on the island of Berizine at the expense of the Imperial Archaeological Commission. That study was interrupted by the Russian-Japanese War, to be more precise, the defeat of Russia. After that, Berizine became the base for the testing of heavy artillery. Later, the Berizan expeditions were sent from the Institute of Archaeology. For many years, there has been an expedition of the state hermitage, and the works were mostly carried out. The main focus was on the site of the ancient settlement. Berizan has been very interesting, in fact, for a very long time. But the most important period is, after all, the ancient period. This is from the end of the 7th century BC to the 3rd century AD. The question is that the ancient settlement on the island of Berizan has existed for almost 900 years. 900. This is a very long time in modern terms. We're now with you in Mykolaiv, which is only 230 years old. And the settlement on Berizan has existed for 900 years. This ancient city has gone through many stages of development and decline over the years. It was a separate polis. Later, its inhabitants were part of the Olvian state and were apparently only responsible for engaging in fishing and trade. It was a small settlement and it was rebuilt. In the first centuries AD, this island was already a part of the history of the Olvian state. The Olvian state was defeated in the 1st century BC by the Getic hordes led by King Borebista. The historical fate of the island was also connected to Olvia, so the settlement was in decline. Then our territories together with Olvian state were a part of the Roman Empire in the province of Moesia Inferior. Very few average visitors know that there was a Roman garrison on the island of Berezine. And the Greeks lived with the Romans. Archaeologists are led to such a bold assumption by their findings of artifacts in the upper layers of the soil. But for a long time scientists were puzzled by a mystery. They could not detect the sacred site or Temenus on the island of Berezine, although all the signs indicated that it must have existed there. Seeing as the island of Berizan is such a small piece of land, where there is no fresh water and there are no trees, the conditions of archaeological research are very harsh. So large areas on this island have never been explored. Any expedition has time constraints. Archaeologists cannot work there for a long time, like in Olvia or Kersenese, where there are reserves, where there is access to civilization. So the island was explored in small parts, and every year they investigated a small part, then the 
next year more, more and more. On the island of Berizine, there was a system of test hole drilling. These are minor excavations for the discovery of new residential quarters, for the identification of any complexes, for the production of any forms of goods. This can be a ceramic production facility, a bronze foundry or a small plant specializing in iron works. In 1884, archaeologists were one step away from the sensation. But the bird of luck allowed scientists only one touch. A stone altar was found during the laying of one of the holes, though there was absolutely no attachment to the building. Our research colleagues recorded this altar, but did not make a scientific sensation or discovery. They did not start exploring by expanding the excavation. They recorded it, but they did not imagine that it was really Temanus of this polis. Well, back in the 1980s, was there really a scientific debate about whether Berizan was a polis or not? There were settlements, there were buildings, but there was no social structure. There was no sacred Temanus and no Agora has been found to this day, meaning exactly those inherent traits that are characteristic of a city. And in 1996, a decision was made at that time by Volodymyr Nazarov to expand this small area where the altar was found. And when it was enlarged, archaeologists first discovered the foundation of the fence and then the foundation of the temple itself, which was where this altar was located. The altar was not inside the temple, rather on the outside of it. This was the reason the first researchers could not find it. The altar stood as if it was situated in the courtyard. There is almost six meters to the temple. These were such empty territories in archaeology and there was no masonry. There was nothing at all except for the altar in the middle of the yard. Back in 1984, no one could even imagine that six to seven meters from the altar there could be the remains of a building. And not just any, but a temple that archaeologists have been looking for over many long years and through hard work. But Volodymyr Nazarov had to wait another year for this discovery. And in 1997, there was an important event on the territory of the Berizan settlement, or Boristanes, as this settlement was called during the times of the Greeks. Temenus, a sacred site, was found. It was small and accordingly, the temple structure was small. Open-air altars, where the sacrifices were made, were near the temple building. On Berizan, no writings devoted to its deity were found. By the way, it is necessary to mention that this temple is located on the territory of modern Ukraine. It is indeed registered as the earliest ancient temple on our land. In Olvia, the temples that we know today appeared later. It is, in fact, the first temple of the ancient Greeks. It appeared at the turn of the 7th to 6th centuries BC. In Olvia's western Temenos, temples appeared some 30-50 years later. This is the life of one generation. Generation. But to whom did this temple belong? To answer this question, we need to examine the history of colonization of the Northern Black Sea by the Greeks. That is, when the Great Migrations began in the 7th century BC, Greeks came to our territories, explored these lands, and some of them stayed and laid the city here. Although it should be noted here that the very first settlement in the Northern Black Sea was still on the island of Berizan, and then the inhabitants of Berizan founded Olvia. But all of them were Greeks. Let's not forget that all the colonies of the Northern Black Sea were considered Greek colonies, but they are different. There are Athenian Greeks and there are Spartan Greeks. And who were the Greeks here? In Berizan, in Olvia, in other settlements. In the 7th century BC, the territory of the modern island of Berizan was inhabited by natives of an Asia Minor city Miletus. 
азійського міста Мілет. Це були стародавні. These were the ancient Greeks who founded their first Apoikia, or colony in the northern Black Sea during the so-called Great Greek colonization, when they colonized the southern, northern, eastern and western Black Sea. Колонізували південне, північне, східне, західне при Чорноморі, да, округ всього. Yes, around all this entire Black Sea. And in the region of the present-day territory of Ukraine, in the region of the northwestern Black Sea, there was the first colony, then we called Apokia, which was a test colony of the first Greeks, who sailed to the northern shore of the Black Sea and founded the first colony. And then they established such big cities as Olvia and later Crimean ones, Kersenesis, Pentecopium, and so on. It is hard to believe that more than 2,000 years ago the bloodiest wars raged here. And from the nearby shores, ships departed to colonize cities not only in Europe, but also in Africa and Asia. The archaeologist who has been managing the excavation of the Mykolaiv settlement, Wild Garden, for more than a year, is convinced that the Greeks of Miletus got to the island and then the peninsula of Berizan and founded the settlement there by pure chance. This is our assumption. The fact is that the great poet Homer in his book Odyssey, in the 11th chapter, wrote a story about the journey of Odysseus north of Troy. Well, it's through the Black Sea somewhere on our territory. And Homer mentioned there that when Odysseus sailed into the territory of the northern Black Sea, he stated, their Sumerian people and their city. Moreover, the analysis of our artifacts indicates the context of the inhabitants of the Wild Garden with the territory of Asia Minor. That is most likely in the legends of the Greeks of the 13th to 12th centuries when they came here to this territory. In their legends, the memories of this territory were reflected. So we can see what the connection was in those times. We have a stone of Asia Minor origin. We have elements of ceramic decorations of that same origin. And look, that is, they, the Greeks of ancient Miletus, were apparently here in the 13th century. And it was passed down from generation to generation. And when the Greek colonization began in the 8th century, and in the 7th century they sailed here, they went here, but they didn't make it to the Wild Garden by only about 50 kilometers. They founded the first colony on Berizan and then, at the end of the 7th century, Olvia was founded and built. So the answer to the question, to what kind of god was the temple found on Berizan dedicated, should be searched for in Miletus. The very knowledge of the origin of the first colonizers of the island is not enough, because the Ionian Greeks worshipped different gods, and in the same Miletus there were several temples. More hints are needed to narrow and search. Eventually they were found, but this is the topic of the next program.